Hello, I'm Greg Perez. And I'm Christy Perez. Welcome to our home and what's cooking in Canby. So Christy, what are we going to do today? Oh, we're going to do some sliders. Some with sliders? A, with a couple of side dishes. We're really close to the 4th of July. So we thought it would be fun to cook up some things that might work for your family barbecue. And so I think I'm going to start out making uh, some sliders. Mm -hmm. And I have one of three. The first one's going to be jalapeno. The second one's going to be Parmesan cheese. And the third one is going to be blue cheese with some other special ingredients. Mm. So first off, this one right here is going to be the jalapeno cheddar. And what we're going to do is I'm going to mix up the ingredients. And how should I do this? Well, I think we'll, we'll start with the meat. We'll dump that into the bowl. All righty. All right. And then to that, we're going to add some sharp cheddar cheese. I bought Tillamook cheese. I happen to like that. And we like to shop local and support Oregon industry if at all possible. Matter of fact, I picked the meat up at Ebner's. Got some oh, fresh meat today. Oh, that I love an old fashioned meat market where you get to actually talk to the butcher tell him about what you're cooking and he has him. He just fixes you right up. One of the next ingredients is going to be the jalapenos. This is a green jalapeno that's been roasted and then I had it set in a bag for five minutes and mm -hmm. then I peeled it. Came off so easy, honey. <laughs> I saw that in the Food Network. <laughs> Did you? So Greg's <laughs> adding the jalapeno. Uh, right and you're going to put it into your, your taste. It doesn't have to be all of it because it may be too hot for some of the individuals that are eating this evening. So. Let's uh, go from there. Right. We spent some time this morning prepping, doing some food prep. I'm a big believer in prepping ahead of time. Um, it's a warm day, and we tried to do as much as we could early this morning so mm -hmm. that we'd be all ready to go. So next I'm going to put some Baja seasoning. I'm going to go ahead and mix this in. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, I see that. The heat and humidity is getting to us, isn't it? Yeah, just Things a little are bit. sticking together a little bit. So you're going to dash it till you think it's enough. And mm -hmm. I think we're at enough right now. Again, this is pretty individual. How much seasoning does your family like? Another thing that we need to like to take into consideration is the fact that we have grandchildren. So the cheddar jalapeno is not going to be one of their favorites. We've got some more things coming, some more choices coming your way. And I'm going to add a little bit of dash, a uh, little dash of pepper and a little dash of salt. So mm -hmm. let's see what we have here. There we go. And it won't need that much. And I'll do some pepper also. Fresh ground pepper. Now Greg's going to mix those ingredients together. And then he's going to start making up some patties. Since these are sliders, we're going to make them small. And thick. And small and thick. So can you slide that tray over there for me? Absolutely. Honey? Right here. Look at this. I've taken a cookie sheet, lined it with wax paper, so that Greg can take his sliders, put them on the sheet here, and we're going to have like three little sections so we can keep them separate. And when we cook these, we're going to also keep them separate so our guests know which ones are which. Then they almost look like a hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> How's they that do, for a set? They sense? do a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna make this one a little bit Just smaller. A little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So I make it an even four. You always kind of eyeball it. Try to divide the meat up evenly. And? and this one will be for a child oh, that yeah. likes The little girls jalapenos. are going to be very happy with that. <laughs> yes. So this one is almost done and complete. One of the things I love about the sliders is that they're going to appeal to every appetite. Some of us are not really big eaters. Mm -hmm. So um, one slider is maybe all we need. And I found that with the little girls, we're always cutting up the cutting the hamburgers in half and trying to adjust to their appetites. What's up next, Mr. Press? Well, I just wanted to go over this real quick. This is the mm -hmm. jalapeno cheddar one, a little bit of Baja mm -hmm. sauce, I mean a spice, and then salt and pepper, and then mix mm -hmm. it up with the uh, uh, ingredients, and they turn out like little small hockey pucks. Oh, they do. So they're nice. Right, 
So the next one on, on the list is going to be the Parmesan cheese. Ooh. This one is going to be uh, a little bit different than the others. You want to go ahead and throw those flakes That's in here, right. please? I bought some Parmesan and it wouldn't matter if it's shredded or grated. They're both going to work equally as well. I'm not really a big fan of the Parmesan in the can. It's kind of powdery and I don't think the flavors are quite as good. This one's going to be fairly mild. We're putting some Parm in that. I have some fresh basil I bought in the um, produce department. But before you put that in, mm -hmm. I want to go ahead and add the tomato paste because we're going to put a couple That's of right. teaspoons of tomato paste. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and do the finger thing right there. <laughs> as long as you don't lick it, it's all good. All right, we'll add some tomato paste to that. Along with that parm. Oh, that smells really wonderful. It does. It has that nice smell to it. Oh, and the, the basil, too, smells wonderful. You want to go ahead and put that in there, honey? I think I have maybe two tablespoons of basil here. And I'll just put that in. I chopped that ahead of time. When I'm doing the basil, I That's fine took right the fresh basil leaves, stacked them one on top of the other, rolled them up really tightly, and then just used my kitchen shears to snip them and make this nice little stack of basil. If, when you get it in the dish, I wasn't really happy, I didn't think it was chopped quite finely enough, so I took my kitchen shears, just stuck them right in the dish here and just kept snipping until I thought it looked about like the consistency that I wanted. And once again, I'm going to add some salt and okay. pepper to this one. And it's to your liking. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. people like a lot of pepper, some just like a, just a dash of pepper. The basil smells wonderful. That oh, it does. I can Fresh smell it. basil. I keep meaning to plant a basil bush in the backyards. But instead you planted what? Rosemary, which okay. is also very handy. And really looks quite nice in a floral arrangement, I've decided, plus adding a wonderful smell to the kitchen. All yes, right. it does. Okay, here's number one. Okay, I'll add that to the cookie sheet. So okay. we're going to add a little bit with our we have kind of a southwest flavor going here with our jalapeno cheddar. The colors, Baja, too. Excuse me. That is nice, isn't it? I like the presentation of the bright yellow and the green with the jalapeno. And now this one's going to be a little bit different with the a little more Italian yes. seasonings. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And I think our little girls, we have granddaughters. I think they're going to be, this is going to be their, the one that I think they're going to like the best. A little milder flavors. They probably like bananas in it, though. They, they might like that as well. <laughs> if we I tell them there's bananas in it, they'll be happy. They'll be really happy. All righty. All right. And I'm going to sprinkle and just a little bit on top oh, for now. It's nice. I like the way that looks. A little extra parm on top there. And then when it's on the grill, it will melt, and then it'll be able to turn mm -hmm. and stick. That's and it will be fun. Right. That looks great. OK, let me rinse off here real quick. Right. And the next one up is going to be the blue cheese. Now the blue oh. cheese is going to be, oh, probably a lot of everybody's favorite. It's got bacon in it. That Who good old love bacon. bacon. I picked exactly. that up over at Ebner's today too. Oh, we love our local meat market, and okay. they have a couple of different choices on the bacon. We had a little trouble deciding: did we want the pepper bacon? Did we want to go with the alder smoked? So we went with the smokier flavor with that blue cheese. Mm -hmm. And the blue cheese, I really like um, the Rogue blue cheese. That's made in Central Point, Oregon. And they make a wonderful smoky blue cheese. But I also liked the convenience of this, I think it's an Amish blue. Take a look at blue. that. Mm -hmm. A little Amish blue that is also, it's an alderwood smoked, which I think is a nice accompaniment to the smoked, the smoky flavors of the bacon. Um, it's very convenient because it's already crumbled and sort of eliminated one step in the process. Actually, a friend of mine turned me on to a little smoker and I did smoke some cheese. That's it will be ready right. next month. Right. If you have a Traeger 
or a little smoker unit you can put inside your barbecue. Your grill. Mm -hmm. Then we, you can smoke your own cheese. Let me add a little and bit more. We're new at the smoking cheese business. So we've smoked it and now we have it sitting in the refrigerator. We had to write Aging. It. It's aging. Okay, next I'm going to put in some freshly oh. diced from earlier today, uh -huh. bacon. It's such a warm day. I tried to do as much as I could early this morning so I wouldn't have to use my stove later, heat up my kitchen. So I went ahead and cooked the bacon and diced after it had cooled. I went ahead and diced it up. I found I had a, I had a paper bag from buying groceries. Mm -hmm. So instead of cooking, um, draining the bacon on a paper towel, I drained it on a brown paper sack. It absorbed the grease really well. Instead of in the pan. And it's just one less paper product that I used in this process. I'm going to put a dash of uh, Johnny salt in here, oh, seasoning salt. So. I think that sounds like a good idea. And I think that should probably be bad enough, don't you think? That should be. That looks good to me. We like a lot of seasoning in our food. We do. I don't think we've eaten anything bland in this house. Uh, no. No, we like lots of seasoning. So we're going to... Okay, I think this is ready. I think it's looking good here. It certainly smells wonderful. Yeah, I can't wait to eat. Mm. Hopefully there's four of these, maybe five. <laughs> If we have leftovers after we have cooked these sliders, I'm not anticipating leftovers, but in the event we should have some leftovers, we're just going to put these in a Ziploc bag, stick them in the refrigerator, and then later on, we'll pop them in the microwave for maybe 30, 40 seconds. 30 yeah. seconds and it's mm -hmm. perfect. We're gonna heat them back up, and we've already got some, we've got burgers ready to go. Boy, I've got some good hockey pucks here. You do. For sliders. <laughs> They're looking really good and smelling even better. Okay, this is the last one here. And then from here, I'm gonna move on out to the grill area. All right. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with these sliders is I'm gonna bring them over to the grill. I have it right at 375. And I'm gonna go ahead and put them on by hand, it's easier deal with. And I've got them lined up and separated so that they are identifiable for later. And once I close the lid, I turn on my timer and I set it for four minutes. And at that time, uh, we'll wait until they're uh, ready to turn over. While Greg is cooking up the sliders, I'm going to make a couple of side dishes. The first thing I'm going to make is a Southwest potato salad. Early this morning, I cut these potatoes up into bite sizes. I used red potatoes. And instead of just boiling them in water, which tastes like nothing, I cooked the potatoes in a little bit of beef bouillon. I just threw in three or four bouillon cubes and secret ingredient liquid smoke. I wanted these potatoes to have a lot of flavor before I ever added anything to them. Potatoes are very porous, so they're going to soak up whatever they're cooked with. If you should make an error in cooking and over salt something, you can always add potato, a raw potato to it to absorb some of the extra salt. I'm gonna grab some mayonnaise out of the refrigerator. I've left that in till the very last minute because I didn't want to risk leaving it sitting out. I'll grab that. Okay, I have that handy to make my dressing. Um, to the potatoes, I'm going to add bacon because you can never go wrong with bacon. Again, I got this bacon at Ebner's Meat Market. I'm also going to add cilantro. Cilantro, oh, this has a wonderful, wonderful fragrance to it. Cilantro has a lot of oils in it. When you wash the cilantro, you're going to buy this in a big bunch at the grocery store. Here's your best bet when it comes to washing it. It's got a lot of sand in it. So fill a mixing bowl with cold water, 
grab a hold of that cilantro, dunk it, dump, fresh water. Do this three or four times. You'll start to see the water will kind of run clear and you'll know you've gotten all the sand out of your cilantro. You can then just go ahead and chop it with a knife or if you like to use kitchen shears, that works really well too. I'm gonna add quite a bit of cilantro. I think I've got a good half cup here that I'm gonna add to that potato bacon mixture. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is take some mayonnaise. I'm going to use a fairly generous amount because I love mayonnaise. I'm going to, I don't have an exact measurement on this. I think I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. This is my guesstimation here on how much mayonnaise I'll need. I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna end up with something like about two cups of mayonnaise. Now, secret ingredient. To the mayonnaise, I'm going to add an adobe chipotle pepper. This little can mm, cost me, I think, roughly two and a half dollars, and I don't like to waste food. So I only needed about two peppers out of the entire can. The rest of it, I'm just going to put in a Ziploc bag, throw it in my freezer, and save it for later. The peppers I've already have chopped. I used two peppers, cut them open, uh, got the seeds out of them, and then I'm gonna add that right now to my mayonnaise. Also, in this can of adobe chipotle peppers, there's a lot of liquid, and that is a really key ingredient to my potato salad. This is going to, so I'm just going to scoop some out of there. I'm gonna add that into the mayonnaise. All right, I made this potato salad for my son's wedding, bless his heart. He's a really good cook, and I think he and his wife have done a really remarkable job of dividing up household duties. He loves to cook, so when they got married, he prepared a sit-down dinner for 12 people, and it was absolutely wonderful. I did what I could to help out, so I made some potato salad to go with the ribs that he cooked on his Traeger. I'm just scraping around kind of here in my bag. It'll be a little easier with a fresh can. I'm gonna mix that up together. My chipotle, the two chipotle peppers that I seeded and chopped finely. Mixing that up with the mayonnaise. All right. And I think to that I'll add a little bit of seasoning salt. The potatoes have a little bit of salt already in them because I cooked them in the bouillon. And bouillon is a pretty salty. So I don't think I'm going to need a whole lot of salt in this. And this is another, salt is easily added to everyone's personal taste. A little fresh ground pepper. There we go. I try not to use too much. The granddaughters catch me. They don't want to eat food that has black specks in it. All right, I've got that mayonnaise. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take all these ingredients now. I'm gonna stir this all up together. Now, what I plan to do on the fourth is make this up early in the morning. I'm gonna make a fresh batch for the 4th of July because I really like to let it sit for a couple of hours. I think that the flavors meld together so beautifully. And I've also found, after it has had an opportunity to sit for a few hours, that it's going to be a little bit hotter than I started with. So I kind of had to learn this through the trial and error process. I think the first time I ever made it, I might have overdone it just a bit on the chipotle peppers because what I hadn't anticipated is that after it had sat for a couple of hours, it was going to be a little bit hotter than what it was initially. Oh, that looks beautiful. I'm really happy with the way that looks. I'm also going to add a little bit of chopped onion to that. Not too much. And keep stirring. Walla Walla onions are in season now. So I was able to get those at the Thriftway store. All right, that looks pretty good. I think I've done enough mixing. That looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a serving bowl, and then I can just set that aside while Greg is out there tending to the sliders. Oh, that looks so pretty. All right, 
trying to keep it in the bowl. Ah, voila. Oh, isn't that lovely? There we go. And I can just set that aside. And side dish number one, ready to go. Now, I have another side dish that I'm going to fix, and that is a corn avocado salad. I cooked the corn this morning. Let's stick that in there when it was a little bit cooler. Now, what I did here was I parboiled the corn. I cooked it for five minutes. I dropped the six ears of corn into boiling water, and then it returned to a full rolling boil. I timed it for five minutes. After it had cooled down a little bit, cool enough that I could handle it, I took each ear of corn, stood it on end, and cut it off the cob. Step two was to take that corn and to put it back into the frying pan and caramelize it. When you caramelize, you're bringing out the sugar flavors. If you've ever made French onion soup, you know that that is one of the key pieces is caramelizing those onions, and it takes almost an hour. But the corn was not nearly as time consuming as caramelizing onions. I had cooked the bacon in a frying pan. There was still just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon of bacon grease in that pan. So I just dumped the corn right on top of it after I'd cut it off of the cob and let it brown up. As it was cooking, I noticed that there were some wonderful sugary smells coming and a lot of snap, crackle, pop happening too. So I just cooked that corn until it started to turn a really lovely golden brown and um, I, I could really smell those sugars happening. All right, to that corn. Now I'm going to add fresh basil. Um, I used this basil, again I rolled it up, stacked the leaves on top of each other, cut it up with my kitchen shears, and I'm just going to dump some basil here into my, to, to my fresh corn. Another ingredient I'm going to add now, I'm going to add some fresh cherry tomatoes. Um, this time of year, we don't have local tomatoes yet, and the ones in the grocery store don't have quite the wonderful flavor that we get when we have fresh tomatoes that come up in August. So I have found that the grape tomatoes have a wonderful, much richer flavor than the ones that come from a hothouse. I'm cutting these little grape tomatoes in half. Um, I'm trying to think how much I'm adding here. I'm going to guess, I'm going to go with about a cup of these little grape tomatoes. I cut them in half because I find it makes it a little easier to, um, to eat them. When I'm at a picnic, I don't like to have foods that aren't bite-sized. I find that if you're, especially if you're eating at a picnic, if you're eating off of a paper plate, it can be difficult to try to cut things into bite sizes. I also find it kind of embarrassing if I have a big piece of lettuce that I can't quite fit in my mouth or a piece of potato. And the tomato can be kind of a big bite. So I'm just cutting these in half, tossing them in here. All right. Now, the other ingredient that I want to add to this is fresh avocado. I didn't do the avocado ahead of time because, you know, we all know how avocados are prone to turn brown. I'm just going to add one avocado to my salad. Okay, oh, this is just perfectly ripe. You just hope for the best, don't you, with avocados? You feel and squeeze every single one in the bin and hope that you get the one that is absolutely perfect. I'm using my measuring spoon, adding this avocado. Oops, slippery little buggers. There we go. The avocado. Oh, I hope this goes well. I was showing everyone at school, not happening, how Rachel Ray just took her knife, stuck it in that avocado, gave a little twist to that seed, and it popped right out of there. On TV, it looked really easy. I was pretty sure I could do that. Uh, Mm. Well, after some direct pressure and about three band-aids, we got the bleeding stopped. I felt kind of silly, and everybody at school made me promise not to do that again. So I'm just going to 
Take my avocado. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm not quite as adept at this as Rachel Ray. That's why she has a much bigger network than I do. All right, there we go. So now I have in my bowl tomato, avocado, caramelized corn, and some fresh basil. This salad is going to need a little bit of dressing to go with it. These are beautiful colors though, aren't they? The yellow and the bright greens and the reds. So my dressing, I'm going to rinse this bowl out. A quick rinse. My dressing, I want to remain light. I don't want to overpower those flavors. I'm going to use about a cup of olive oil. All right, I've got some EVOO going here. I'm gonna put that in my mixing bowl. There we go. I'm also going to add a little bit of white balsamic. The original recipe, which I always feel the need to modify a little bit, called for a champagne vinegar. I looked at it at the store and decided I wasn't willing to pay $3 for an ingredient that I needed about two tablespoons of. So the white balsamic will work just as well. Remember, this is not science. This is cooking. Don't hesitate to improvise. I'm also going to add to this just a little bit of Dijon mustard. I think that'll be plenty. I'm going to say that was a generous tablespoon. Some fresh ground black pepper. There we go. A little bit of salt, a couple of shakes, I think ought to do it. Give that a nice whisk. There we go. Our friends, William and Susan, very dear friends of ours who have Marywood Farm in Canby. I made this for them one night when we were having a little barbecue and William just raved about it. He was so complimentary about it. If you want to be invited back to my kitchen, compliment my food. Flattery will get you everywhere. So whenever I have William and Susan over, he always asks me, are you making the salad with the corn again? But in November, it's a little hard to come by some really good corn. So, all right, that looks so pretty. That is just lovely. And isn't that pretty? Look at those colors. Oh, that corn is lovely with the red and the soft muted greens of the avocado and some bright green basil. That smells so wonderful. I'm gonna put this in a serving bowl. There we go. And I'm hoping that Greg is ready with the sliders now, and we will be all set. Perfect timing. Greg is back with the sliders and some toasted buns. Those are beautiful. Well, you know, those toasted buns, they're slider buns, and I called Cutsforth yesterday, and I asked them if they could make these for me in the bakery, and they did, and they said, pick them up today in the afternoon. Oh, that's wonderful. How much notice did you give them? Oh, just a day. That is so great. And those are absolutely perfect. They are. Perfect for our sliders, oh, aren't they really? Absolutely. Okay, now I have them all sectioned off, mm -hmm. like we talked earlier, mm -hmm. so we know which ones are which. Okay, so we'll make sure the little girls don't get the jalapeno ones. Which would be the number ones. <laughs> okay. All right. So where are we at? Well, we are going to keep this pretty simple. We want to focus on the flavors of the meat. Greg, you've done such a beautiful job with these melding these flavors I know, together honey. you have. I know. <laughs> so Thank you. So we don't but I really know. want to put a lot of stuff <laughs> on the buns. We're not going to add dill pickles or anything with a really strong flavor. We want to taste that flavor in the meat. Well, you have the flavor here well, and you have do. the flavor there. Absolutely. We have a lot of really wonderful things happening here with our sides. I have some romaine lettuce leaves, some sliced tomato. I'll probably grab the mayonnaise if somebody wants to Add that to their bun, maybe a little ketchup. I'm sure the grandkids will want that. That sounds great. Doesn't it? And our, some of our friends are gluten intolerant and also very conscientious about their carb intake. So I also found that these romaine lettuce leaves work really well if you want to make yourself a little hamburger wrap and not use the slider bun. 
That's, that's good. Just an alternative. Good suggestion. Yes, everything looks so beautiful. I think we're ready to eat, aren't we? Well, no, wait a minute. I have one more thing. You do? Other than Ebner's, where we got that good bacon mm -hmm. and the hamburger, mm -hmm. and then we had these special buns over at Thriftway yes. made, I stopped by a local brewery. You did? Seven Brides in Silverton. Once again, you're my hero. We love Seven Brides Brewery in Silverton. They are the nicest family, aren't they? They are. And they really do, I think, three brothers, and between them they really do have seven daughters, hence the name Seven Brides Brewery. So oh, let's just pour so a little uh, toast here. and. Ooh, that's a beautiful amber color. What kind of beer is this? Oh, this is called the Frankenloos. Oh, they've named their... After their daughters. After their daughters, which is so sweet, so charming. Oh, Honey? that looks one. Everything looks so wonderful. Well, you know, cheers to this lovely meal and you helping me in the kitchen. Thank you. It's fun to be in the kitchen together, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. It's a little trying sometimes, but <laughs> we'll make it through. So thank you for watching our program on What's Cooking in Canby. Yeah.